Out of center, if you don't leave. Dear, gracious and heavenly Father, come to you today to ask for guidance uh, and wisdom as we conduct this business meeting. And we ask that you allow us to stay open-minded and keep the uh, best interest of the town of Solar City at the forefront of our decisions. Amen. 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 Yeah, John said a pledge. I pledge to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic of 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 to advance a framework for our success through balanced governance, dynamic partnerships, and an engaged community. Mr. Brown, if you will lead us in the vision statement. Our city is a safe, prosperous, and vibrant community where diversity, innovation, and education drive success in a globally competitive society. Thank you, Bo. Are there adjustments to the agenda? Mayor, you have the amended agenda, which is on your table with you, and that includes, we amended it, section 6.8 under new business mm -hmm. to include 101 East Raleigh Street, Schedule O. Okay. You can approve the agenda with the modification. Second. It's been moved. Uh, second that the agenda be approved with the modification. All in favor by sign of uh -huh. All those are in the same line. There ain't nothing much to carry. Motion to approve the consent agenda. It's been moved upon a second that the consent agenda be approved. All in favor, let it be known by sign of uh -huh. All of those have the same right. Hearing none, consent agenda approved. Now we just need to open, we can open the public hearing. After I uh, um, go over the packet contents, or we can go over the packet contents and open the public hearing. There's no one signed up for public comment. Oh, mm -mm. Okay. All right, go ahead and go over the uh, content. Okay. So if you'll look at page 12 and 13 of your packets. The town of Seller City received a voluntary non-contiguous annexation petition located at the campsite for GGT Enterprises Project ICE. The timeline is below. On May 10th, the voluntary annexation petition was received by the town of Seller City. And May 16th, 24, the Board of Commissions approved resolution directing the town clerk to investigate the subject position petition and offer a finding of sufficiency. At the May 20th meeting, the town board reviewed the findings of sufficiency and approved the resolution to advertise and set a public hearing for June 17th, 24, which is tonight. Once adopted, if you guys um, approve the annexation ordinance, we will extend the corporate limits of the town of Siler City, North Carolina to include the additional four parcels located at the campsite. And you've already been given the information and the maps, and um, the clerk's findings were favorable. Thank you. Are there any questions or concerns? Mm -hmm. I don't have any, sir. Do we need a motion? Yeah, you, uh, I would suggest that open in the public yeah. period, even though yeah. I mean, someone, yeah. someone could have come in after the sheet was. Yeah, so now you can open the public hearing. All right. Then uh, we declare the public hearing open to discuss this matter. Get a motion to close the public hearing. Motion to close the public hearing. Second. Been moved by a second of public hearing. Be closed. All of it be known by a sign of mine. Uh -huh. All in favor? 
All in this screen. Let me uh, have the same right. Hearing none, motion carried. All right. Um, yeah, go ahead. Absolutely. Motion to approve the uh, annexation ordinance number 2024A1 to extend the corporate limits to the town of Silver City, North Carolina, effective June 17th. Second. It's been moved and probably second that. The uh, annexation take place. All in favor by sign of up. Uh, all opposed, having the same right. Hearing none, motion carried. Old business 5.1 Hampton Village LLC annexation. Madam Clerk, you have to Okay. So, during an earlier meeting, the town board directed the town clerk to review the subject petition and offer findings of sufficiency. The following memorandum is the findings document executed by the town clerk for your review. This is for a voluntary annex and annexation petition contiguous request for Hampton Village. As the finding of the town clerk is non-favorable, as noted in the following document, the town board may elect to schedule a public hearing to receive public comment and take action on the subject petition. Also, you will find attached to this memorandum a staff overview per department function of town operations, identifying known or forecasted implications of the proposed petition, if granted. This is a representation of the larger packet of information that the board will receive if a public hearing is granted. So, I can kind of go over the different impacts. So, if you'll look on page 17, the finance department impacts. That would be the tax revenue we would receive at 54% per $100. Currently, um, we, own, we don't get anything because they're outside of town limits. That's right. So this would be, we would, possible tax income of $7,180.97. Then the personal property tax would be on the mobile homes, a revenue of $18,207.53. And then the finance director and I, we said probably an average of 219 vehicles owned at Hampton Village at an automobile of $5 each. That would be $1,095. And then automobile tax, assuming 219 vehicles valued at $8,000 each would be $12,267.53. Then we would have a loss of fire revenue at $0.12 cents per $100 tax value of $5,641.89. So the total tax revenue to the town would be 33,109.14. The planning department impacts, we didn't see any additional impacts um, because we're already there in our ETJ, so we already handle code enforcement. Sorry, I skipped over fire, um, fire department. They're already in our central fire district, so there's no additional impacts. So if you move on down to the police department impacts, you would, you'll note that this annexation would have a major impact on the police department. The chief of police, Brian Reagan, was able to gather the last four years of call data from Chatham County Sheriff's Office, and the data determined an average of 150 calls per year at an average time of 35 minutes per call. Those calls range anywhere from domestic violence calls. Brian, what else? It's all of them together from the Complaints, domestic violence, shot fired, suspicious, wanted person. It, it's it's all over. It would impact patrol investigations, our domestic violence advocate. It would have an impact all the way through the police department. So we were we were able to determine the minimum cost to the town um, with the extra officers and detectives required. A minimum would be for just one officer in a car, one hundred twenty five thousand. So that was the cost that really tipped it and made it unfavorable. Parks and recreation impacts on, um, let's see, we, uh, I'm trying to think, Tyler's not here, but I think out of town, these may be a little more expensive for the ETJ, but I'm not 100% certain on that, but the financial impact from the parks and rec would not be that large because Hampton Village is right beside a freight park. Um, public works impacts, this is another one. Um, the positives where the water and sewer already exists, streets are up to specification. Negatives, more streets to clear during inclement weather, more leaf, limb, and white goods to collect, increased amount of garbage carts, increased number of streets to pave, 
Streets have speed bumps and they would have to be removed. Street lights become town's responsibility. So that's another financial impact that we did not include because we just don't know um, the cost of that. Less revenue from water and sewer. So right now the average water and sewer revenue from Hampton Village is averages $150 per household. So that's $22,500 a month in monthly revenue. If annex Hampton Village would pay half of the water and sewer rate and new monthly average would be 11,250. So we would approximately yearly revenue loss will be 135,000. So you can continue flipping and that's all the different addresses that would be annexed. And finally, on page 23, you can see the breakdown and the final line, the impact to the town of Solar City revenue and new expenses negative 265,641.89. Great, thank you. Hello. Any questions or uh, or a uh, job part? What would do uh, what would happen if we took no action? It would just if there's not a motion to set a public hearing it dies for lack of a motion. Okay, so do we want a motion for both I have a question. Yes, ma'am. So I was just wondering, Ed, is Autumn Estates, are they in the same situation? They're out in the ETJ, or how are they? They're Chris. They're in the They are, okay. Yes, they are in the city limits, yes. but Hampton Village is not. Yeah, and I believe that's the one Chris told me that this is a tree line separating them. Right, okay. Okay, I was just wondering exactly. where where they where they were because they're in the same area. It's right. just one is over right. to the right. Yeah, but that was annexed in a totally different manner. They actually came through the woods. William, did I understand you correctly? If we make no motion, it dies. That's correct. That's what happened. I believe to this same thing in twenty sixteen. Okay. Yes. What's the benefit of making no motion versus? No motion, as you just say, that it does. And um, we've been there, so the negative impact that we'll have. Right. I mean, what's the difference between voting no and not voting at all? Well, the public hearing. Because the, the motion will be able to set the public hearing yeah. after the next step. You could set the public hearing. That doesn't obligate you to approve it. Right. But it yeah. seems if you're, if, it, if there's not a strong will among the board or desire or appetite, it makes no sense to have the public here. Okay. Yeah, yes. A speed bump. Why are you taking the speed bumps? Because they become city roads and you have to take the speed bumps out for all different reasons, like um, the fire department, police department, and different things like that. And Chris, what are some of the other reasons? And again, there is street light, um, street lights out there as well that would become the property of the town or the town's responsibility. And we're not sure that would be an additional financial impact as well. Is someone in the said property in the room? Well, that speaks volume in itself. Mm -hmm. oh. I'm on recommend that we take no action. And I need to hear from the rest of the board. I'm with you. I agree. I make a motion that the board takes no action concerning the voluntary annexation petition request for Hampton Village. That's fine. Do that. They voted by the second. All in favor by sign of uh -huh. All opposed having the same right. Hearing none. The motion carries. Thank you. Next time. All right, moving on to new business. 6.1, Jack. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> uh, a little bit of history here. The Mount Air Farm has asked for East Third Street to be relocated a couple years ago. They're moving through for that application of uh, putting the construction drawings together. When we were doing the reviews, we realized there were some streets that need to be renamed. And they have suggested that uh, the segment when you draw on your uh, in your packet, it's called petition number three, 
This is the short segment that would be on the east side of the plant, kind of go to the round where we formerly called tank and dummy as an Exxon gas station. Yeah. So it's just that little section that connects back to 64 and light. And uh, the suggested name that um, Mount Air sent to the county for approval, they got that uh, initial approval to call it Kelvin Drive. And so re re renaming roads is something the town board would approve for us. And so that night, that's what we're looking for is to uh, appro approve the petition and name, rename that section Kelvin Drive. I mean, how far would that go? Because would it go the entire, you know, we, it was voted to, to close part of that road. Does it go from the beginning of the closure to the end of the closure? So this would just be from the stoplight at 64, go past, you know, tank and comes on your right. And when you get to, uh, I guess, the back side of the oil chain of the KK, that's where that street's going to close at. So it would just be from that. Just, just past the uh, oil change business. Yeah. The stoplight is going to be called Kelwood Drive. So, why not do the whole thing up to the end where they were going to close ground? That would be that is continue to be Third Street. So th this is only this section that they're renaming that. The, that little, yes. little Okay, I'm still. I'm going to. So right now it's Third Street. Right. 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 Okay. And so it's going to Third Street's going to be closed. And it's going to close at that point right behind the oil change business. Oh, okay. That's, okay. That's, okay. That's, that's what I was going to do. They're going to be called a site there. Okay. Right there in that closure. Uh -huh. okay. Okay. That's what I was going to do. I thought possibly the closure would be. There's closures on both sides. But I, but I was thinking it was yeah. the closure was further toward town. I do too. That's, so that, that's, that's, that's what I'm glad you did. So you, that so you have an east closure, which is the one we're talking about, and a west closure on the other side near the old laundromat. Okay. Yeah. Now, are there still plans where they were going to move out that where the motorcycle um, park was? They were going to have a road reroute the traffic. Yes. That's, that's, the, plan. that's the plans that's, that's in the drawing. Yes. Okay. You have it. All right. Wait in a motion. I'll make a motion to approve petition three to be renamed Hillwood Drive. Second. It's been moved by the second that we um, rename that little short section, Kelwood Drive. All in favor by sign of uh -huh. All opposed having the same right. Hearing none. Motion carries. All right. ABC Board Appointment 6.2. So we have several appointments tonight. Yes. So the first one's the ABC Board. So on June 30th of 24, Otis Martin's second term on the Siler City ABC Board will expire. Martin is not eligible to serve another appointment at this time. The Siler City ABC Board shall consist of three members appointed by the mayor with the approval of the majority of the Board of Commissioners for three-year staggered terms. The Siler City ABC Board will have a vacancy for one with no residential requirements as of July 1st, 24. The following individuals have shown interest in serving. Butch Hudson, of 108 Hudson Road, Siler City, North Carolina. Butch served on the planning board for Jack 14 years. 14 years. So, so the only um, what you can do is tonight you can appoint Butch Hudson to the board, or you can um, not appoint anyone, and you can elect to advertise the position. I'll make a motion to appoint Butch Hudson. Well, let's turn to the Siler City ABC board. But Expiration date of June 30th, 2027. Second, in which Hudson be appointed to the ABC board. All in favor, let it be known by sign of box. All opposed, having the same right. Hearing that motion carried. But is there no vacancy on that board? No, the ABC board only consists of three members. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And that one is set by state statute. Okay, the next one is the Downtown Advisory Committee appointment. And the Downtown Advisory Committee has a vacancy for two members with no residential requirements. The committee is for those who have vested interest in the future of downtown Siler City or who have knowledge, skills, or abilities that serve the interest and intent of the purpose of developing a viable framework to enhance further revitalization and development of downtown utilizing existing and emerging strengths of the vital central commercial hub of the Siler City community. The Downtown Advisory Committee is composed of five members. 
from within and around the Seller City community. Currently, we have two vacancies, and we have had four individuals who have shown interest in serving. We have Megan Smith, of one, she owns a business, First Impressions Hair Salon at 121 East Raleigh Street. Elizabeth Mooney, who is with Mount Air Farms. Jamie Wilson, who also works with Megan Smith at First Impressions Hair Salon. And Edwin Artuega of 131 South Birch Avenue. He is the owner of Winget Real Estate Group. So tonight you will appoint two members out of your list of four to serve. I make a motion we appoint middle of nine. I was confused. When we appoint people, normally we, we've had applications in the past. Why don't we have applications presented with references and things like that? Because we don't really know these people well. Um, I just didn't. We put them in the packet this okay. time. Yeah. We had made some approvals a couple months ago where we, we could actually follow up and call references that they list on the application. And I can tell you that Edwin, Canada. Yeah, Edwin and Elizabeth Mooney have both um, did the intro to local government course. We'll do that. Sure. He said, uh, Elizabeth, morning. Uh, we, when discussing this amongst ourselves uh, and getting this prepared, we looked at that class okay. and those that achieved and had finished that class, and that would be Ergo and Argento and Liz. Uh, we'll go with that. Okay. I don't I'd like to say something. Though. Yes. Um, Megan Smith, I know her personally, and um, she is a graduate from George Matthews High School, so she's vested in Siler City. She uh, doesn't live, she lives in Randolph County now, I think, I'm not sure, but <laughs> he has a lot vested here, and um, whether she's taken the course or not, I'm sure she would be uh, willing to do so. I would like, I would like to see her considered to be on this uh, downtown advisory board. Okay, when, now. when looking at it, I'm thinking in the perspective of people that actually know Siler City, been here, grew up here, went to school here, that know and won't, and she's she wants the best for Siler City and it has done well. The business looks great. Um, but that's my, that's me. Okay, we have three nominees uh, to choose from. So I need someone to make a motion on. Uh, I'm which, we, uh, do we do them individually or uh, can we do them individually? Yes. Okay, I yeah, you can do it that way. Um, see who the top voters are, or you can. Just make a motion and name the two you're proposing. Yeah. Well, I mean, it might be make for sense to do it one at a time. Well, he, Mr. Austin's already made. Yeah, there's a lot. So, we got four. I second Liz Mooney. Oh, okay. I second the nomination for Liz Mooney to be appointed for her first term to the Downtown Advisory Committee. It's been moved upon the second for Liz Money to be appointed to the downtown advisory committee and let it be known by a sign of I. All opposed have the same right. Period nine, motion carries. Well, then I would like to make a motion that we appoint and Smith to the downtown advisory committee. Sure. It's been moved and probably second that Liz. Wait a minute. Be Megan, 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 Smith. Megan Smith be appointed to the downtown advisory committee. All in favor, let it be known by a sign of I. Uh -huh. All opposed, hearing none, motion carried. All right. I think that was a majority, so it's not even voting on the other candidate. And I'm glad to see, I'm glad to see a lot of interest because in the past we've not had that much interest. So. So I, I would like to uh, say to everyone that that put their name in, please don't stop. We would love to see other people interested. And in, we've got so many different boards, and uh, we'd like to see people still show interest and want to be on the boards for Because so we need everyone to see the Yeah. Okay. 
Okay. Planning board appointment. Okay. All righty. On June the 30th, 24, Ann Radcliffe's third term will expire and she is eligible to serve a fourth term. There is a city limits alternate position available as well. And the following individuals have shown interest in serving. Robbie Davis of 549 Pine Forest Drive, Siler City, North Carolina, and Brenda Bullis of 810 North Garden Avenue, Siler City, North Carolina. And then on June 30th, 24, Linda Colpack Martindale's second term will expire and she is eligible to serve a third term. So currently we only have one vacancy and that's the city limits alternate position. You have two people that have shown interest in serving there and the city limits person, Ann Radcliffe, again, she, her third term is expiring, but she is eligible to serve a fourth term and is interested in continuing to serve. And Linda Colpack, Colpack Martindale's second term will expire and she is eligible for a third term. She is the ETJ member. Okay. So tonight I need three motions from you. I need to appoint a city limits alternate member from the two, appoint Linda Colpack Martindale for the third term and Ann Radcliffe for the fourth term. And the motions are at the bottom. Give me a I have a question. So what can you tell us about Robbie Davis and Brenda Bulls? So um, Robbie Davis, he was the manager of Food Line. For several years, he graduated from Chatham Central High School. He lives over in the country club and in the city limits portion. Um, he actually lives near some of the easements um, for the sewer line. Um, did, he marry, did he marry Georgia Truck and stuff? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And then Brenda Bullis, um, she was, um, she's a hairdresser and she goes to Piney Grove Church. And he was known her. Do you know, do you know her, Norma? Brenda Bullis. I always call her Jean. Yeah. Jean. Yeah, Jean Bullis. Oh, Jean Bullis. Brenda Jean. Yeah, her name was. That's the first number. You may have actually. Ma'am, I mean, sir? No, it's, just, it's, it's hard to make a decision because we just don't. I can go and get the copies of the applications. It's yeah, that information that I don't think that. Is public record this owns some of them, and we learned that in the class. Did they put references on there, though? Mm -mm, they no. they didn't. Okay. Well, that would be the only thing we could yeah. use to exercise this. So is Ron Dameron, Dameron not, is he the one that we're replacing? No, Ron Dameron is the ETJ alternate. Who, who are we replacing? We are not replacing anyone. We're adding to the uh, city limits alternate position. We're adding. Yeah. Mr. Bray, it's on vacancy on the next day. Yeah. Okay. I saw I like that. I like my later, but it's um, it's like they publish it like a public comment rule. They want us to stop people putting people's addresses on minutes too. Okay. So it's a pleasure to board in this matter. Go make a motion, please. Yes, please. No, no. Well, I make a motion that we extend Ann Radcliffe's third term, and then will that expire? Extended to help me out here. 27. 2027. Second. It's been moved probably second that Ms. Radcliffe's uh, term be expanded to on 2027. All in favor by sign by. Uh -huh. All opposed having the same right. Three and nine. Motion carried. I'd also like to make a motion that we extend Linda Colpack Martindale's term to 2027. Second. It's been moved and probably second that we extend uh, Ms. Martindale's term to 2027. All in favor, let it be known by sign of I. Uh, All opposed, having the same right, hearing none, motion carried. We've got to do the alternate member. Yeah, for the city limits. Well, I'll make a motion that Brenda Bullis be appointed to the city limits alternate member to the town of South Carolina City's planning board with no term. So it's been moved and probably second that Ms. Bullis be appointed to the as the alternate uh position for the city limits with no term. All in favor by sign of I. Uh -huh. All opposed having the same right. Hearing none, motion carried. 
Okay, now we have the airport advisory. Right. I'm sorry, ma'am. Go ahead, Obi. Six point five hour. Uh, our board advisory committee appointment. Uh, mm -hmm. go ahead, Miss. Okay, so on June the 30th, 24, Sam Hines' first term will expire, and Mr. Hines is eligible for a second term, which will expire on June the 30th of 27. On June 30th of 2024, Tim Boris's second term will expire, leaving a vacancy on the airport advisory committee. Tim Boris can be determined eligible for a third term per the Town of Solar City Advisory Board and Committee Policy, page six, adopted by the Solar City Board of Commissioners on August the 21st of 23. So what our current about that's that states verbatim what our policy says, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna read <laughs> read everything to you, but what you can do is Let's see, you can see, you can deter determine if Tim Boris meets the requirements for a third term. So if you can, when you can deem the circumstances of an individual service to the community to be of so, such notable importance as to warrant a continuation of service. And I've had no other applicants for the um, Airport Advisory Committee and I can say that Tim has been very vocal in the meetings and goes above and beyond um, with the advisory board with new ideas. And I did get an email from the chair of that airport advisory committee asking that we reappoint uh, Mr. Morris to this board. So what is the pleasure on the board? Okay. I'll make a motion to nominate Sam Adams to a second term which will expire on June 30th, 2027. Second. So we're going to second that Sam Hines be uh, reappointed or appointed to this board for a second term. That all in favor by sign of out. All right. All opposed having the same right. Hearing none. Motion carried. And uh, Tim, Tim is eligible and he's wanting to do it. Is that correct? Yes. yes. Okay. And it's been recommended by the chair okay. of that board. I'll make, no, go ahead. I'll, go, I'll make a motion to Tim Boris um, and with this term that will expire, I guess, 2027. Is that right, Kim? Yes, ma'am. No, sir. It's been moved by the second that Tim Boris be reappointed to the uh, Airport Authority Commission. All in favor, let it be known by a sign of vote. Aye. All opposed, out of the same right. Hearing none, must you carry. Thank you, board. Manager's report. Mm -hmm. Still Still up up oh, it is. Oh, I'll let you Yes. Uh, budget number 14, uh, in the fiscal year 23, uh, the, uh, a piece of fire equipment was ordered. It, there was a 20, fiscal year 23 PO. It did not get delivered until July. So there was unspent funds at 630.23 rolled in the fund balances. But the moment staking them out to, in order to fund that piece of equipment that was delivered in July. Uh, the next budget amendment, uh, there were uh, unforeseen repairs on a fire truck. Uh, rather than let it sit idle for four months to realize those expenses in uh, the 25 fiscal year, went ahead and did the repairs on that. And then the last budget amendment uh, is moving money from planning department to town manager's uh, department to cover uh, changes in salaries. So the, for 14, even though it was purchased in 23, 24, it wasn't delivered, which means we weren't able uh, to? Yeah, so uh, it doesn't matter when you order something, it's when it is actually delivered and the service is rendered. Yeah. That, that is when you recognize the expense. Gotcha. Thank you. And you need three. three. Yes, sir. I need three different motions. Yeah. Okay. We're all three separately. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, what's the amount that we need to move for the uh, 16? 
Oh, for 16, it would be about uh, 30,000. It's if you look on page. So on page 67. Okay. All right, you ready? Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll make a motion that we approve the form for two oh two four point one four budget amendment for appropriating funds for fire equipment. So I second. So I'm moving. Second that we amend the budget to uh, procure the necessary fund equipment. All in favor by sign of by. Oh. All opposed having the same right. Hearing none. Motion carries. We also would like to make a motion to approve the 20, 24.15 budget amendment for appropriating funds for fire vehicle repairs. Second. It's been moved and bottom second that we appropriate the necessary funds uh, in this budget amendment for fire department repairs. All in favor by a sign of aye. Yeah. All opposed. Having the same right here and none. Motion carried. All right. I'd also like to make a motion to approve the 2024.16 budget amendment for appropriating funds for town manager, town manager department. Second. It's been moved and probably second that we move the necessary funds to appropriate for the short -term shortfall in the town manager's budget. All in favor by sign of aye. Uh, All opposed having the same right. Hearing none, motion carries. Thank you, sir. 6.7 personnel, FLSA, and compensation. We're probably all going to work on this memo together, John, Jack, and myself. I'll let Jack start. Thank you, Emily. Mayor, um, so this is something we identified uh, a few weeks ago and started working on it. So it's basically the Section 9 of Article 3, the pay plan, the personal policy. It's called overtime and comp compensatory time pay provisions. Uh, we've, we've been looking at it uh, together as a group. We shared it with the directors uh, about a week ago to get some buy-in to it, and then we presented to the board this evening for their consideration. So on page 69 uh, is that study. You've got uh, two things to pay attention to. There is a strike through used. That means that we're going to delete that section of the section nine, and then in yellow or highlighted would be new language. And so that's pretty much what you see on page 69. There's a couple places there. But bottom line is we're talking about non-exempt employees, uh, providing them the opportunity to choose whether they want comp time or uh, overtime at time and a half. Uh, that, that's the big part. And then um, uh, taking out some of those restrictions on deciding when people get overtime and comp time. But uh, putting back to the folks, the individuals that are not exempt, letting them choose once a year, and they keep that for the entire year. It's like an upper enrollment period. And so the next year, if they want to switch to Comp or overtime, or keep it the same. have that choice. Um, and I'll stop there and add and ask John or Kimberly if they have anything to add. FLSA rules say that you have to give someone an option out of a piece of paper that says if I'm elected to take comp time. I think that's a good move. Yeah. It's been said, it's been said I think, yeah, and not, you know. So you need a motion to approve. Okay, well, I'll make the motion to approve the staff recommendation to revise personnel policy section nine, overtime, compensatory time pay. Mm -hmm. So I move and promise that then that we uh, move to uh, amend or uh, change the policy for overtime and e time, uh, compensation time run and overtime. All in favor by sign of by. Uh, all opposed having the same right. Hearing none, motion carried. Thank you. Um, we have the addendum to the only two section schedule. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
All right, thank you, Mayor. Um, and so, our uh, attention just this past week, uh, there's some interest in uh, purchasing Carter Bank. So, we put this together. Kimberly did some research to figure out how to, to sell property. So, this is an opportunity for the board to consider putting Carter Bank up for sale. Um, and so, um, considering this resolution to authorize the advertisement, it's a sealed bid process, selling of the property at 101 East Raleigh Street. And there's a couple of key dates there that, that Kimberly's provided. July, June 17th is the, the day we adopt this resolution. June 27th and July 4th, we put it in the newspaper. Uh, July 29th, we we'll receive an open bids here at City Hall. And August 5th, the board would consider uh, awarding that uh, highest bid. Okay. Highest responsive, responsible bid. All right. Or there you can reject our bids. Yeah, that's probably going to have that option too. And there is a 5% um, Bid bond required yeah. when you send the bid? Yes. Anything else, John, that you can think of? Uh, there is some interest, uh, outside interest. Uh, There's been gaining a little momentum uh, board. So this is probably our, one of our better options. So what is the board's pleasure in adopting this resolution? I'm so glad to see that there have been some purchase in that building. So I think our constituents would agree that that's the right thing to sell this, that this property. Could I ask a question? Yes, ma'am. Um, you know, like you see on TV for someone selling a classic car, they have a minimum that has to be met. So are we going to say there's a certain amount that has to be met or we will not accept the bid? When we talk about that as staff, I think you probably could. But I think we could put this out for bid, and if there was not a bid amount, you would did a sale. You would then you wouldn't it. have to accept. Exactly. Okay. Well, I didn't know if there was a yes. You would have to have to accept the bid, but you would not sell the property. Like you could reject, we you could decline it, but you would have to accept that. We well, accept the bid, but we would decline yes. to sell it to them. All right. Um, and also, um, what makes it a little bit trickier when you do set a starting point. There can be upset bids, mm -hmm. and so the upset bids, then you have to turn around, and we have to come back, and we have to advertise again. So the board could end up doing five to ten different resolutions if it got into a bidding war, and it could take, you know, six six months longer. Okay. So. It's original purchase price. Is it $100,000? That's correct. Yes. Okay. And... We're okay with the water count being active and the future buyer not having an issue utilizing the water services. I checked with uh, Chris, and here's the deal with that building. The consumption cannot differ. Whatever it was using prior, mm -hmm. uh, like you can't go in and make a restaurant out of it. Right. It's going to add to it. So, yes, to answer your question. That's because we're just more attractive. I'll make sure it can be active. Or is it already active now? Is the town no, it's it's not active? Chris, it's not turned on. Remain active, yeah. then. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, yes. It's not turned on. They closed on it in June of 2022. That was post moratorium, so it shouldn't be an issue anyway. Following that, fine. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, even if they closed the town, at it it still met that criteria. Good. Good deal. I make a motion to approve the resolution authorizing advertisement for sealed bids for the sale of certain property located at 101 East Raleigh Street, South City, North Carolina, with parcel ID 15254. It's been moved by the second that the corner be building uh, be advertised to sell. All in favor by sign of up. All opposed to the same right. Hearing none. Motion carried. Thank you. Manager's report. A couple of calendar uh, things I want to share, Mayor. Oh, man, did you I think this uh, Wednesday, this Wednesday is Juneteenth? It's our holiday. I think I mentioned that between the Thunder Room and City Hall be closed and the floors will be uh, on the holiday. Thursday, June 20th, uh, 8 30 a.m., there's an EDC board meeting. Uh, I'll, I'll be attending the mayor's front as well. I think it's a good meeting. A virtual meeting Saturday, June 22nd, 10 30, James Larry Chief Pavilion event, yeah. uh, the morning event at uh, Bowling Park. <laughs> Thursday, July 4th is a town holiday again. I want to mention that because we won't have a meeting, possibly won't have a meeting before then. So that'll be another holiday. It's a Thursday, middle of the week. <clears throat> and then Monday, July 15th, it looks like it's our next regular meeting. Uh, and I mentioned that for another reason. Um, Tim Mack, our planning director, is scheduling a public hearing at night for our comprehensive language plan to be considered. 
Uh, so public comments will be welcome and a board decision can be made that evening if all goes well. So you've had that opportunity. That's all right, Mayor. I'm glad to answer your questions. Thank you, sir. Donald Turner support. I don't have anything to like, Mayor. All right. Anything coming from the board uh, before we move any further? Yeah, I have, I have a question or maybe just a point of clarity, maybe. Um, in preparation for this meeting and in reviewing the minutes from last meeting <laughs> budget, I, I think I was I was a little um, uh, was a, uh, admittedly a bit confused because I didn't realize that we had voted to defund the second position. And I'm just curious, and not saying it didn't happen, but just curious if we had discussion about that before that came up for a vote at the last meeting. Yes, we did. Yes. Okay. Uh, and, and, you know, the way the, the thing about this recording is you can go back and listen to it yeah. and hear everything that was said and done at the meetings. And so, uh, but this, this was fully vetted and discussed and talked about in that meeting. And, and last, last week. Too. Yes. Yes, sir. Do we have an appropriation for HR for the next fiscal year, though? No, we do not. We do not. No, we do not. Is it not in our um, best interest to have an HR, either outsourced? We have, a, we have a um, HR specialist. Specialist. Okay. But she's but not a director. No. No. But we have someone who can help us out with employing, like not asking the wrong questions, basically, when we screen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and she's been doing, she's been in the HR field for probably more than 25 years. She okay. worked at Randolph Community College as well as, well as Ashford City Schools in HR. So she's very knowledgeable. So. I think the confusion was that HR wouldn't exist at all. So that's good. Thank you for the clarity. Well, we did move, um, we did combine um, the HR department with the um, administration department. And you'll see that in the budget summary. It's so we did. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. And with the defunding of the um, HR director position, that opened up the possibility for us to have the communications specialist as well as a um, deputy town clerk. So. So I know, uh, well, I mean, I guess we're gonna go into closed session. Right. Sure, sure, yes. Okay. I have some more questions. <laughs> I'll ask. I'll wait until then. Yep. Okay. Um, anybody else? Yes. Uh, I've had a lot of people compliment the town. Yeah. On the way things are moving forward and looking well. And especially had a lot of people compliment Rolling Park. Yeah. About how it's shaping up and look better. And I know we've had a lot of people involved in that volunteers, town employees, yeah. and everybody. And I would also like to say thank you so much for moving to Port of John. <laughs> okay, real quick, uh, I guess I'll close it out with 400 meters have been installed uh, as of today. So that process is moving forward. Uh, we had a meeting with Robert Reese on last week, a representative from this area, about more funding for our water and sewer departments. And again, spinning back to Commissioner Bray, there's a lot of work going on here. And I hope that you see it and understand it. Uh, this team has hit the ground and they're working very hard to get things done and uh, it, it is starting to show. So the more that we can do, the more that we can work together. Uh, I'm going to call out Mr. Lamb here just out, just because uh, he made this state. No, I'm going to let me finish. Mayor, Mayor. This is not a person. We have somebody that's not supposed to be joining our meeting. Who is that? Cut them off.
right? All right, we're good. We're good. We had this afternoon. Anyway, I'm using the for one reason, and, and, and this is the buy in from uh, our citizenry and the public, uh, black sector and government working together. And, uh, you know, so he, he talked to some US dollars, is where I'm going with this about. Solid City, and all along with uh, some of our realtors. So we're getting the buy in from everywhere. And I just wanted to let everybody know we appreciate it and let you guys know what you may not know uh, that is going on in this town of Solid City. So I just want to thank everybody for all that hard work and the things that they are doing to help us accomplish what we need to. You say U.S. Congressman, do you mean Washington or do you mean the State House? Washington. Washington. Both senators and their chiefs of staff yeah. are trying to work with me to see if we can get something into the federal budget. It's worth um, a shot. Yeah, sure is. So, you know, I, again, climate and government working together for the best of what's good for the citizens of Solid City. Well, well, I appreciate it. Fantastic. Y'all are doing a great job. Well, I'm glad to say, I did anyway. Yeah. All right, that's all I have. Yes, ma'am. We just one or two couple of comments, and I want to thank our police chief yes. for coming to our store, Fragments in Solar City. Um, I had a, a issue, an issue or not an issue or whatever, but I wanted to discuss with him and had not had the opportunity to do so. So he came to us with two of his men on his force and he forgave me when I called him by the wrong name. <laughs> <laughs> I did it right away. They called Yes, I understand it, and I looked around, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> you laughed. Yes, I did. <laughs> but thank you for those comments, because we, uh, the, the team is working. The team is working. All right, can okay, we get a motion? All right. In accordance with uh, North Carolina General Statute 143-318-11-A5, I make a motion to go into closed session. And moved it by the second, uh, and according to the North Carolina statute, that we go ahead and close session this time. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Hearing none, motion carried. Thank you guys for coming out. Thank, Thank you, you for your support. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't trying to stop you. I was just saying, somebody. Everybody's in the Yeah. Oh, 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 yeah.